Single flute cutters are awesome for a number of reasons, and in the desktop CNC world, they can allow a machine to punch way above its weight class. Here's why. When you're selecting your cutting parameters, you generally want to ensure that you're taking a healthy chip load. Chip load for the uninitiated is how far the end mill moves between each cut. If, for example, you had a single flute cutter spinning at, let's say, 100 RPM, moving at 10 inches per minute, then your chip load would be 0.1 inches. Every tenth of an inch, your cutter would make one revolution. If that cutter was a two flute, then the chip load would be 0.05 inches. Every revolution, the cutter still moves 0.1 inches into your stock, but since there are two cutting edges, each edge bites into half that amount of material. The more flutes you have, the smaller your chip load becomes for a given RPM and feed rate combo. When you're running a high-speed spindle or router, there comes a point where you can't sustain optimal cutting parameters. It could be that you can't feed fast enough to push your end mill into fresh material, or you don't have the torque or rigidity to feed as fast as you need to. For every pass your end mill makes, there is a reaction force from the resistance of that cutting edge shearing through material. Two flutes equals twice the stress on your drivetrain, spindle, and structure, all other things being equal. Usually, when we start struggling with cuts on hobby machines and you hear vibrations or the spindle bogging down, we back off on our feed rates and thus chip load. Or we try to cut shallower. But that's not always the best thing to do because most of the time, bigger is better in the world of chips. And that's where single flutes come in. They let us hit the material fast with a high RPM, but with much lower torque requirements because the cutter is pushing through the material fewer times per second. This can be much easier on a CNC that doesn't have the outright rigidity of an industrial machining center. Plus, a single massive flute is almost impossible to clog. So in situations with compromised chip evacuation, like deep cuts without high pressure air blast or coolant, single flutes will keep you going where multi-fluted cutters will choke. And while some people might argue that a single flute isn't as strong or long-lasting as a multi-fluted cutter, keep in mind that a single flute lets you pick speeds and feeds that are closer to optimal and there's more carbide behind that one cutting edge. So for the end mill we're going to talk about today, rest assured that you will max out your shape oko before you max out this cutter. With all that said, here are some recipes for my favorite tool for hogging out aluminum on the shape oko. The 278Z coated quarter inch single flute end mill. 18,000 RPM, 40 inches per minute, 15 thou depth of cut. This produces a really healthy chip load of 2.2 thou per tooth, and you can certainly go deeper, but if you aren't using a cam package that lets you do ramp-ins or helical entry, I'd rather you keep your cuts shallower and faster. Same vein of thought with contour tool paths. 18,000 RPM, 36 inches per minute, 15 thou depth of cut. I backed off by 10% on the feed rate because as you cut deeper, you'll encounter more resistance from friction along the walls. There is a caveat though, if you're cutting your contours with a roughing pass enabled in Fusion, because you're taking your step down in two passes, you'll only ever be touching one wall at a time. So wall friction ceases to be a concern and I'd feel comfortable bumping that feed rate back up to 40 inches per minute. I've also tested this cutter to a depth of cut of 20 thou and it's held up just fine, but it's very dependent on how tuned up your machine is and if you're augmenting your chip evacuation with something like Air Blast. And finally, adaptive roughing can be done at 18,000 RPM, 36 inches per minute, a 60 thou depth of cut, and a 20 thou optimal load. This is the recipe I run when I need reliable, stress-free operation of my Shape Oko for hours on end. But I have run my machine with cuts that are 25% deeper both axially and radially. You have a lot of room to play around with your cutting parameters when you're using adaptive toolpaths. And when all is said and done, because you've kept a really healthy chip load of 2 thou per tooth or more, your part is not going to be scorching hot. I ran these programs bone dry with not one drop of lubricant and they're comfortable to the touch right after machining. I hope I've opened your eyes to some of the possibilities of single flutes. They give you a ton more flexibility in dialing in optimal speeds and feeds that are a good fit for your machine. I hope these recipes help you make the most of your CNC. Good luck and have fun machining folks.